Um, when I finished my law studies, I started working with unions as a consultant, um, representing the interest of the workers. And once um, a group of women came to one union asking help because two little girls, one three years old and the other, I think, 12 years old, have been uh, raped by multiple perpetrators. And the union decided that they will support this group of women and the girls with the lawyer, and the lawyer was me. Um, it was quite difficult because all the patriarchal structure is behind the laws and behind the persons who um, prosecute and administer justice. Justice is something very difficult to achieve for women and girls. So, that changed my life forever. I start working against sexual violence. First, as a, a, a collective of lawyers called Compañera for 15 years. And every day we put more rapers in jail, but we realized we are not, or we were not making a difference. And then we decided to approach sexual violence in a more holistic and interdisciplinary manner. And then we realized we need to prevent, to create um, a group of leaders of the communities that will be able to teach others the rights and how to defend their rights. And we start doing that work until we got a big assembly of um, 50,000 leaders, uh, grassroots leaders in the communities. And then we start working on prevention and protection and assistance of victims, and we continue with prosecution. We realize we have to um, make our work more holistic and we start working with discrimination and all human rights and, and also the children human rights because the mothers, the women are almost the one uh, responsible as well for defending their, their so it was very interesting and as a consequence of these 40 years of work in sexual violence, I arrived to sexual exploitation and trafficking and pornography and I met um, our sisters from the, the coalition international ones in New York when I came to present a shadow report to the committee on the elimination of all forms of discrimination at the UN in New York. And then <coughs> uh, they selected me to be the representative of the coalition in Mexico. And I started working, trafficking, as, uh, and sexual exploitation as one other form of violence against women and sexual violence. Um, and uh, I think in 2003, uh, the former regional director of the coalition, she was Soraida Ramirez, who was based in Caracas, Venezuela, passed away. And then they asked me to take care of the, of the region. And I started working with representation in 12 countries uh -huh. and with a membership around 100 organizations. 
and since then up to now and with very little resources a lot through email and through other opportunities that I have to travel to the countries uh, we have now representation in 25 countries of the region which is double of the work and we have 400, almost 400 organizations coming together um, because all of us share this idea that um, sexual exploitation, prostitution, pornography um, is violence against women and that we need to take actions to change this reality and to to build a more just world for women without violence. And it has been a long, long way, but um, we have been able to build networks um, very interesting in different countries. And also we have like thematic groups, for instance, uh, groups of, of survivors uh, groups that are more specialized in uh, assistance and protection of victims, groups uh, of lawyers that are more involved in the issue of prosecution. And I think the key is um, all of us are feminists and we have enough interesting work for every speciality. Then we realize that all the laws that have been issued in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, where there is a law, are not good laws. So uh, we start making a law that now it ha has already been presented in several congresses. And we are trying to make visible the demand side. And the Palermo Protocol says in Article 9, Fraction 5, that the state parties should take uh, legal measures or other type of measures added as educational measures to reduce the demand, which was a great accomplishment of the Coalition International. Then we already got uh, the criminalization of the demand in El Salvador and in Guatemala. And now there are three laws, including the issue to punish the demand in Argentina, in Ecuador, and in Mexico. And I think if these laws are approved, uh, soon we will be able to expand this model. But we believe Criminalization is not only the, the solution, uh, but also education. And then we design this model, which uh, have proved to be very, very successful, uh, to make, uh, uh, is, is targeting young males from 12 to 25 years, to make them aware of um, the traditional masculinity, what is gender, what is gender equality, and also um, what is the initiation rights in the traditional manhood, and how prostitution comes around and pornography, and all the damage the women and the girls that are there are suffering, and they never realize that until they get the training. And uh, the last chapter is about alternative masculinities, which some of them said, no, I don't want to change because it's more comfortable to have the women taking care of all my needs and my children and my house. But others, the majority, luckily, 
uh, are very, very aware after the workshop and very committed to continue uh, spreading the voice and multiplicating or replicating what they have learned. So now we have almost 3,000 boys trained in all Latin America and some of them have been formed to become uh, replicators of the model. And we have a network, very nice in Ecuador, that they call them the pink helmet because they will fight against violence, against women, against the demand, against the use of or the selling or buying or renting uh, human beings. So, and also we have uh, 180 um, replicators in Colombia and we would like this uh, phenomenon uh, go together with with a lot to punish also to educate and uh, because I believe a lot in education uh, but the key issue is how can we educate at home in equality or for equality boys and girls giving both of them the same opportunities um, educating them for peace and not for war, educating and giving them the same opportunities, the same treatment, the same obligations, the same love. No? I think that's um, something very important that will make um, very easy to do a cultural change from one generation to the other. Because I design uh, an educational model uh, that goes first uh, the participants to realize the danger, how near is the danger in the persons most beloved to them. And um, from there, they can project the risk in their communities, in their society, in their, in their country. And it's um, a, a model I designed to raise awareness in them. And that's it, it's, it's working. I'm also, I have a master in education, in science of education in London. So this is a quite uh, very convenient combination to be lawyer and to be as well an educator that um, had, uh, I easily connect with young people because I have had the experience to be a teacher since kindergarten students up to postgraduate students. So this has enriched a lot um, my uh, scope and the possibility I design all these instruments, even we have designed uh, multimedia games because now for the teenagers the, is the issue. They want uh, multimedia and internet and we have as well a marathon of, of sexual rights of men and women in our web page. You can go there and see it. Uh, uh, we have uh, use all the technology as well to penetrate their awareness and commit them. We have designed uh, an award. It's the Latin American Award for the Life and Security of Women, which is more focused in the demand side. And we recognize every year on the 23 of September uh, the best public policies, the best conviction, the best investigation and rescue, the best prosecutor uh, um, proceedings to get traffickers in jail, the best um, NGO protecting or uh, doing prevention, the best um, cultural 
producer. Uh, it could be an, a writer, a painter, a, anything that, and also we recognize uh, the media that protects and acts ethically with victims. And it, for me, it is an exercise of accountability, but in the positive manner, not so much uh, saying you are doing very bad, but be aware that we are looking at you. And if you, you do things properly, then we will recognize you. Next year, we will publish the first um, gathering of best practices that have received an award. It's not a lot. Still, this award has no money, but a diploma and, and a statue. Uh, but um, it has become very known in Latin America and all the authorities and even NGOs mm. that are doing different, now they want to be nominated and get the award. So it, we are in the fifth uh, award and I think it's a, a good way not to, to blame them but to get them to improve.